Welcome to the word for today. This is the ministry that brings you the word of hope every week. Today we are going to discuss uh, the divine intervention into the life of Lot and, and his family and how they were delivered from the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. It is important also that uh, we can draw a lesson that can help us to understand how God would also intervene into our own lives during time of trials, turbulence, and destruction. Thank you for joining us today. May God bless you. Amen. Dear Father in heaven, we are very thankful and grateful for the gift of life that you have given to each one of us. Amen. But to thank you, Father, uh, for providing for our needs. We want to thank you for bringing us together on this channel to discuss your word. Lord, we pray, we invite your Holy Spirit to be with us so mm -hmm. that your word would be impressed in our mind and in our hearts and will be a transforming power in our lives and in the lives of people who will listen to this message. Thank you, Father. We pray, provide, I mean, uh, we pray that you, your presence be with us and lead us into this study. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Okay, um, let, let's get back. Uh, let's refresh our memories of what we learned uh, last week. Uh, we learned, uh, we study the book of uh, Genesis chapter 19 from verses 1 up to verse 17, I think 17 years. Mm -hmm. So in that uh, purchase, uh, we, we learn a lot of things in the family dy dynamic of, uh, of Lord and how Lord was able to escape from the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. And uh, we, we, we take some reflection of what was all about the interven divine interven the intervention in the lives of Lord and his family and how they were forced out to live. Sodom and Gomorrah. So let's try to refresh our minds and uh, before we, we continue with uh, part two of, uh, of our discussion. You, you mean you want us to uh, go talk about what we Yes, what, what, what did you learn? What have you learned? What have you uh, well, learned? I, yeah. I, I have a question, Pastor. Yes. Uh, you know, the, the, his son-in-law's you know, they didn't go with them, did they? No, no, they didn't go because they refused. They rejected. They mocked. They mocked Lord because yeah. the message that was sent to them to for for them to live Sodom and Gomorrah, they they, mm -hmm. they took it for granted that the message wasn't valid. So yeah. they decided not to go with Lord. Lord was Lord went with his two daughters and right. his wife. Yeah. yeah. And so I was thinking that all so all along, Lot's son-in-laws were probably doing, you know, living the way the other people were living and enjoying, you know what I mean, living in sin and uh, and degradation like like the other ones were, because they weren't in the house with Lot. They were, I guess, in their own uh, own homes. It just surprised me though that that they wouldn't. I guess it didn't really surprise me. That they didn't that they didn't believe in like same same way as with Noah. People didn't believe that it was gonna rain because they had never rained. And so they didn't take take it serious. And so neither did, did his uh, son in laws. So um, it, it, I, <coughs> you know I, there was there was a provision of grace for everybody in yeah. Sodom and Gomorrah. Grace but period. everybody rejected the grace exactly. that was offered uh, very for 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 no uh for no price they were not supposed to pay any price for for their salvation angels were sent there to to deliver the message of salvation people uh did not listen to the message even though they heard the message they did not respond positively to the message that was the problem okay can i say something yes i did say that i was going to um look around, research for verses one and two. Yes. So <laughs> I had a chance to, um, had a chat, I had a chat with Dr. Um, Shepard, Thomas yeah. Shepard at the university. Mm -hmm. And you guys saw, right, um, according to what he said, um, mm. I'm reading from his email. Mm. And he says in verse one and two, the verb for brought down 
worship is HWH. I cannot pronounce it. It can also mean my lords or from or another um, Hebrew word that he gives me that means also Lord, sir. So in this case, when he says um, my Lord, he was simply saying sir. He wasn't just saying Lord as in Lord. Okay. And um, in, in another thing that he says, I believe one of you guys says it, said it, if Lord knew that in the get-go they were angel, why would he go to protect them? Right. Right. So. Yeah. You know, when Moses was writing this report, in, uh, he, he was referring because the Holy Spirit was revealing, revealed to him exactly uh, mm -hmm. the identity of the, of, the, of the angels. That's why he wrote, uh, they the, the came two angels into Sodom, mm -hmm. they, they entered Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. So because he was writing as a report of what had actually happened, I guess what really confused me is the word mm. my Lord. So I have yes. another Bible yeah. that actually says worship bore down. I have like um, a, a Bible um, uh, in, in Latin. From the, so it actually say they actually they worship them, the angels. So I guess that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. You guys will write it. Yeah, okay. okay. What, I what I learned, if I may, um, mm. It is that God, before he does anything in, in his uh, wrath or what you may call it, um, he always sends uh, messages. He always sends messages or, uh, for us to, to repent and so forth before he does anything. That's what I learned. And um, uh, uh, Lot's sons-in-law, they were... They were asked to, to leave, but they refused because of the same situation. They think about, they may think about um, what they would believe in and think it's nonsense, like Noah and the flood. They mocked him, and the same thing happened during uh, Noah's time that they mocked him until the flood came. Yeah. But God always sent warning. That's what I'm saying. Right. Yes, uh, my, uh, book of uh, Malachi and other prophets, they said uh, God doesn't do anything without revealing his secret. That's to right. His servants. That's right. So it is always God will not do anything uh, so that people will, uh, will say, why didn't you tell us if you are going to do this? Right. Nobody is going to blame God for being uh for being uh, for missing uh the opportunity that god has provided mm -hmm. nobody would, would would really blame god because everybody is given equal opportunity uh yeah, to yeah. for salvation but it's only our negligence and our rejection of the yeah. message that will we will only blame ourselves so That's um true. let us uh, continue with our study uh let us go to uh, chapter seven. I mean, chapter nineteen, verses, uh, verses seventeen to to twenty-two. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, "Escape for my life, for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain." Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. And Lot said unto them, Oh, not so, my Lord. Mm. Beha behold, now thy servant hath found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast shown unto me in saving my life. And I cannot escape to the mountain. Mm. Let some evil take me, and I die. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, Look, we, yeah, to verse 22. Okay. Behold, now this city is near to be near to flee unto, and it is a little one. Let me escape thither, as is not a, as it, is it not a little one, and my soul shall live. And he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, 
that I will not overthrow this city for that for thee which thou hast spoken. Haste thee, escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou come thither. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zor. Zor. Yeah, th thank you, Lola, for reading that. Let us look at some uh, critical point in the lives of uh, Lord and his family. First, we understand that Lord lingered and hesitated in the first place when they were supposed to just get out very quickly. Mm -hmm. He hesitated and he lingered, he was moving around trying to take something or trying to look at some of the things that uh, he, he was so loved in, with. And uh, until he was taken by force, yeah. the angel used force to just pull him by his hand and the, her do I mean his daughters and his wife. And when they were supposed uh, to go to the mountain, I mean, as the Lord says, please escape quickly, run into the mountain mm -hmm. for safety. But what do you think, Lord, did Lord really listen to what, to the instruction of uh, why, as to how they should, uh, should flee? Mm -hmm. did, he, did he listen to, did he follow the instruction from, uh, from the angel? No, he, he didn't. It seems like he was hesitant. Like he said, he's still hesitant. He still wanted to do, uh, it was the safety of self. He, 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 when he heard escape to the mountains, he, he, he wanted to give another uh, direction to go to Zor. And uh, the, the angel already said that the plains, all the, the cities on the plains will be destroyed, but he did not listen to the angels. I believe because he was still doubting in his mind that uh, that the fear came on him. And then he realized, well, I need to go a place where I know. And that's what I come out of it. What lesson can we learn from here? Following uh, our own inclination and, uh, and, and, and idea without even hearing and following the instruction God himself gives us. Because he mistrusted, he mistrusted uh, the angel. He, he mistrusted God. He did not put any trust on, on the Lord. He did not he put trust on himself. So we are going also to see as to why he chose Jah. Sitting next, yeah. And uh, sometimes, Mary, yeah. Sometimes one thing that um, strikes to me too, sometimes when you make a decision and you take a bad decision, God doesn't force you. I does, that doesn't mean that he took a bad decision, but sometimes God let us go with our decision yep. to do whatever we want. Just like in his case, he did not trust what the angel was saying, go there, but he wanted to go his own way. Like, send me there instead. Did not even ask, you know, why are you, no question, but he said, you know, send me there instead. So. Yeah, like uh, what we learned last week, fear of the unknown, mm -hmm. it is always have a negative impact on our decision making. Because we do not know what lies ahead, sometimes we tend to, to only work on things that we know. Because he knew this city, not, mm -hmm. not knew this city. Maybe this is where he spent most of his uh, recreation moment. He went there because you see ge geographically, Zohar was just uh, a close... I mean, a very short distance where you can just walk there and come back home. To, to find that, we will read, uh, verse, read verse, uh, verse 2. If you go back and read, go back and read uh, later on, you will find that Zohar, the plane of Zohar, is just a, a short distance from, uh, from, uh, from uh, Sodom where God, uh, Lord was living. But that's why he knew the area. He said, instead of fleeing into the mountain, why can't I just go yeah. very close here? His heart was just stuck with the city of Sodom. He, 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 he didn't want to, to leave the city. Right. And that's why, Mary, you are right. Sometimes, uh, I mean, most of the time, God doesn't force his way through us, to us. Really he, he gives us a free will to choose and to do whatever we want to do. But we feel 
the result and the repercussion, the consequences is all about that. Mm -hmm. And this will be another question because as we go on uh, reading, we will find that uh, the decision was not the right decision. It impacted his life and the life of his family. So let us read uh, uh, verses uh, 20, 22 to 23, I mean 23 to 27. I mean to 26. 22 to 26? Uh, 20, 23 to 26. Okay. The sun was rising upon the earth when Lot entered into Zor. When the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the, Lord, from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. Mm. But his wife looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. Yeah. My question here, before we, we, we look at the question, you see, at dawn, that's when Lord were forced, were taken by, by the arms at dawn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then at sunrise, there is Zohar. You see the, the distance? At mm -hmm. dawn they were taken by the hams. At sunrise, there is jaw. That, that's mean a short distance move. Yeah, yeah. That's why he wanted, Lot wanted to go there instead of way up in the mountains. So he didn't want to go, this is, this is my thinking. He, 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 he didn't want to go far from uh, Gomorrah because in his mind, Part of him thought, well, it's going to still be here. So I don't want to get too far away from it. So that's why he wanted to go to Zor because it was close. And he could, you know, like you said, go back and forth. So he really still didn't totally believe that God was going to destroy Gomorrah. Otherwise, he would have just went to the mountains like the angels told him to. Oh, uh, another question here. Uh, when the angels were speaking to Lord and his wife was listening, mm -hmm. why didn't his wife say, okay, why can't we listen to the instruction and go to the mountain for our safety? He should have even, uh, I mean, insisted to, to Lord to, I mean, listen to the, to the voice and they should have gone to the, um, to the mountain and uh, be safe there. But do you think uh, uh, the, the death of Lord's wife, when Lord's wife was turned into a pillar, when she looks back, a pillar of salt, when she looked back, do you think Lord was to blame for that? Because he did not take his, uh, his wife too far away. Um, mm. yeah, yeah, I like, yeah. If he was hesitant, everybody looks towards the head, and the head is always the... Uh, the, uh, the the leader, which is the, the father or the or the one that uh, has the authority over them, see, and he and he was showing all this unhesitance and and second thoughts, and it it kind of kept uh, his wife in in Sodom and Gomorrah, kept him there in Sodom because she was thinking about Sodom, but he and, and with this hesitation. It, 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 it grew on her, and she became more towards looking towards uh, Sodom, and this is why she turned. Well, wait a minute now. What? Uh, <laughs> I don't want to be the devil's advocate, but this is a personal walk. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, this is a personal walk, and just like Adam and Eve, she, she, she bit the fruit. Adam didn't have to bite it, but he bit it. So, you know, you, you, just because you lead a, a person somewhere, uh, like they say, you can lead a, ho a horse to the water, but you can't make him drink it. It's the same thing. It's a personal, she, she, even though Lot may have been looking all crazy and like, uh, I don't want to go, she should have been thinking for her own safety. Well, uh, no, I, I think I'm, I'm not going to look back. I'm just going to keep on going. It's personal. It's a personal decision. I can't, you can't, you can't take me there. To, to heaven, but you can, you can't, how can I, I can, put it? I can, I can tell you about heaven and I can experience it, heaven through me. 
and that gives you a choice. But if you don't take the choice, no, you leave in yourself in, in the opposite. You, you it know. wasn't Lot's fault. It wasn't Lot's fault. I, I have think. to agree with um. I I agree <laughs> because <laughs> and I agree when it says that um it's a personal walk because yeah. she was there when he said don't look back. Yeah, I, right. It I, said. I, I, <laughs> the, the, the angel say, don't look back. It was her decision to look back. Right. And, well, if you say that she was supposed to look at Locke, Locke was walking. Even though he was sitting, he was walking and he was not turning back. <laughs> yes. Well, let, let us see. Let's see here. It, the first, in the first place, Lot met that decision to take his family to where they were not supposed to go. They, I mean, mountain was... I, I mean, their design de destination by by God Himself. But not think, okay, it is not right for for Him to take His family to the mountain. He, instead, he branched to a nearby city where mm -hmm. this suffering and problem started. Uh, uh, you know, where uh, the decision that uh, his wife made was from Zar. He looked behind because it was just very close. She looks behind. That was, if they had gone into the mountain, I think he would, she would have got no opportunity to look back. Thank but you. I, is that a physical look? I, I don't think it's a physical, that's my thought. It's a physical look back. I think her thoughts, her mind, Yeah. I don't think she really turned around and looked back. Her I mind was still that. set. And Lot, even though he's, he, he wasn't a completely, when the angel said, get out, and uh, he was footing it. He was about to go. <laughs> and he right there made the decision that he would not, he would just obey now. When the angel had to take a hold of him, he knew he had to go. What and he, he and I, I think his thoughts were going now. Uh, and she was looking back, she was looking back in her mind. No, I think her body turned around too. I think yeah. her body had to turn around. Because yeah. I think it was physical. Okay, yeah. first of all, I think it was physical. She turned around, and I think they were thinking about everything that they had built in that city. Right. And not only the physical things, but they had children in that city. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They left mm -hmm. behind daughters. They left behind, you know, son-in-laws. You know, who knows what else they left by in relationships with people that they left behind, and, of course, possessions, okay? Nobody wants to start all over again, you know what I'm saying? But when it comes down to it, are you going to follow God or are you going to follow after your possession? That's right. And that's what it was about in my today. opinion. So, yeah. yeah it's it's going to be the same thing with us today. Right. That's right. What lesson, exactly. can, what lesson can, we, can we draw from that? What lesson Lord, do uh, our accumulation of wealth has uh, a say in our decision making? Because God is calling us mm -hmm. to come out to come out from uh, uh, from the wicked world, to come out from from places where he does not want us to live in. So really? do we sometimes, okay, okay, it is really very hard for me to live this. It is really very hard for me to not to to live without this. Yeah, it's yeah. true, it's true. Just like you know, Abraham, when God right. told Abraham to leave, he, that's right. all Abraham knew. And he didn't right. know where he was going. But he trusted, he trusted God, and that's the thing. We, we, it, are we gonna? Am I gonna trust God, or am I gonna trust uh, myself? And you know, and and like 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 Ava said, you know, stuff. You know, we left our stuff, and you know, and 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 other people. But at the same time, when it comes down to it, when it comes down to the the real nitty gritty, is it, if it's you. And, 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 and God, I'm, I'm going to listen to God. I just have to forget about whatever else is, is that I'm leaving because of, I'm sure that what, wherever he's taking me to is going to be better than what I'm leaving. But we don't think about that. Like, like, like Ava said, you know, we, got, we built a life there. Even though it was bad, it was still our life and it's all that we knew. But it just lets me, lets me know that we, I have to trust God. I have to to do what God said, not what man said. I can't look to man and what he's doing and make a decision on if that's what I'm going to do. Thank, thank you very much, Lola and Eva and uh, 
everybody. I, I think this this uh, this topic is very crucial mm -hmm. because uh, sometimes we, we think uh, what we own on this earth or what our lives is all about is everything, but everything is God. God is everything. Amen. But once God calls us, when God calls us to come to him, he tells us these are some of the things that you need to get rid of from yourself, from your life, mm -hmm. in order to attain my peace, in order to attain my well-being. Please get rid of all of this from your life. So we find sometimes very hard to get rid of those things. Mm -hmm. But what do we do? If we cannot do it by ourselves, what do we do? We need to take it to him. He who yes. can transform. He who can yes. change. He who, yes. can, who, who can make things possible for us. So it is only God. Sometimes we struggle with life. It's like, uh, like Lord and his wife and uh, the children. They struggle with life. When they was called to come out, he struggled like we see the way he was lingering the way he was hesitating. Uh -huh. Until even uh, this, um, uh, I think the angels were not happy with him, looking at him going that way, trying to look around, trying yeah. to you not know, to, to take a step forward. So that was uh, the problem that uh, we, we find ourselves today in. Yeah. God himself or his spirit tells us, please try to live this way of life. Change your way of life. And we can't, we can't listen. We still linger in the same situation for years. The cycle continues year after year, after year, after year. Mm -hmm. uh, time, New Year come, we make a resolution. Okay, yeah. this, I'm going to get rid of this. Only a week or two weeks, we find that resolution is broken. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's true, Pastor. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's uh, read uh, from verse 26. Uh, start verse 26 through 32. To the place where he stood before the Lord. And he looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah and toward all the land of the plain and beheld and lo, the smoke of the country. Abraham got up in the morning and look, looked towards uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. What was he thinking? What do you think? <laughs> what was he thinking? Mm. He probably was thinking if um, are you is somebody saying something? I'm no, sorry. go ahead. Uh, and Jesus will will, will yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, he probably was thinking his his nephew got saved because he was the one pleading for him, and um, and I'm pretty sure he had his nephew and his family, um, is in mind when he stood up. He was looking at the flame. Yes. In my opinion, I mm. think what he was thinking is, wow, um, there really wasn't 10 people in the entire city that uh, could keep that city from being <laughs> burnt because I thought I made a good negotiation. There should have yeah. at least been 10 people just in my, my family from yeah. Lot's family that were righteous. So, you know, I got that God all the way down. So, you know, yeah, they should be good. And then you look up in the morning and you see smoke over there. You're like, wow, no I, wonder if, I wonder if my family made it, right. you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, Lot, well, I mean, Abraham was thinking too deep about uh, the welfare of his, uh, I mean, uh, of his relative, Lot and his mm -hmm. children and mm -hmm. the wife. Because he was thinking, I think he did not sleep during the night. He woke up very early because his wow. negotiation was powerful. Because he, neg he started negotiating, I think he spent a, he spent a lot of time trying to convince uh, the angel from sparing the life of people in Sodom. Mm -hmm. But I think when he saw the smoke was going up, he said, "Okay, no." I think there was, like you said, Eva, you are, you are right. It seems that there, there may be nobody who is who was worthy to be to be served there yeah. so he was very concerned about uh, the welfare of his uh, his people in Sodom it is it is of course today uh, when we see our own people our children our relatives they are being taken uh, into 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 suffering maybe as a result of uh, 
giving themselves into habits that are destructive to their health. We, we feel so concerned about their lives. You know. So uh, Lord, I mean, Abraham was praying, was praying. Out. I think even if, even after the angel has have, have already left, he was continued praying to God about, about the, the salvation of Lord and his family. Yeah. So that's what we need to do for our loved one also. We need to pray, take time to pray for them, pray for them. God mm -hmm. will intervene in their behalf. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we can't compromise. When God says come, we have to go. And like you said earlier, Pastor, he all and, and so did Lerner. God always gives us a like a warning, a precursor, you know, okay, come out from among them, you know, and he, I, like, I don't believe he would ever have harm or destroy anything without giving people a heads up, you know, mm -hmm. this is coming, you know, just like we know the signs of the times now, we know that Jesus, where well, people say, well, Jesus has been coming for years. Yes, he has been coming for years, but the, the signs of the times are, are gearing more and more, uh, uh, how can I, obvious, yeah. if I can use that term, the the signs are in, are so close to it, they're coming in rapid succession. So, you know, it, it's, um, the word, the word is true in itself. And we have to either trust God or trust the things that we've, uh, that, that God has given us, and like our stuff. People want their stuff. <laughs> Forget that stuff. I want to live. Mm -hmm. Okay, Th thank you. Uh, le let's uh, read uh, uh, the reference to uh, to this uh, narrative uh, from Luke chapter seventeen, from uh, verses twenty six to thirty two. Let's see uh, the reflection of Jesus Christ as he was trying to remind people how they should live during this end time. It is a true reflection of the life of of people in Sodom and Gomorrah. So he's in his statement, he said that uh, we need to remember Lot's wife. So somebody read uh, Luke chapter 17 from verses 26 to 32. 32? Yes, 26 to 32. Just as, just as it was in the days of Noah, so will it be in the days of the Son of Man. They were eating and drinking and marrying and, be, and being given in marriage until the day of Noah until the day when Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, just as it was in the days of Lot, they were eating and drinking, buying and selling, planting and building. But on the day when Lot went out from Sodom, fire and sulfur rained from heaven and destroyed them all. Mm. Mm. 32. Uh, up to 32. Oh, 32. So will, so will it be on the day when the Son of Man is revealed? On that day, let the one who is on the housetop with his goods in the house, not come down it, not come down to take them away. And likewise, let the one who is in the field not turn back. Remember Lot's wife. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that that very short praise, that short statement. Remember Lot's wife. It mm -hmm. means a, it means a lot. Mm -hmm. So you need to take a little time. Very, you need to take some time to ponder upon this statement and think. Uh, what should I learn? What can I learn from Lord's wife? Mm -hmm. What can I learn from uh, from the family of uh, of Lord? How can I learn? What one lesson can I draw from here that can help me to grow as a Christian? Help me to grow and be be faithful to God and wait patiently for His second coming. So I do not know if there is any comment uh, before we close. I was going to say previously, uh, I was going to get like the polar opposite of what Mary said. I think that when Abraham got up and saw the city destroyed, he probably thought that his nephew was gone as well. Because I don't, I don't think the Bible says that he got confirmation as to whether or not his nephew was alive, right? Mm -hmm. That I can't think of. So I'm assuming he probably thought that he, that him and his, uh, that his nephew went along with the city. So that's, that's, that's my, that's my, that's just my, my best guess, but. Yeah, nonetheless, I just wanted to give that. It's kind of like what I said. He was kind of like worried if he made it or not. He, he, was, he was asking, you know, when he saw the flame, he was asking, um, wondering if he, if he made it or not. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, Eva, do you have any final word? Avis. Avis. Oh, um, basically, I just think that I feel like we're in a similar time frame, um, like with Sodom and Gomorrah. And we should all be asking ourselves if we're close to the end times, which I do believe we are. No man knows the day nor the hour. You know, if we had to leave behind our loved ones and family, would we be able to do it? Would we be able to leave all of our possessions, our business, or whatever behind and go into the wilderness and, and you know, be led by God? Will we be able to do that? And if you can't answer yes right now, then we need to pray to God and ask him for guidance and to help yeah. us so that we get to that place and, and are strong enough to do that when the time yeah. comes so that we we don't have to look back. Amen. Uh, uh, thank, thank you. Uh, Rufus, do you have any uh, word that uh, is still holding in your heart? I, I was thinking about Matthew, uh, I mean, Mark 17, 27, when he said they, they eat, they drink, and married, and they were given in marriage until the day that, that, Noah, that Noah entered the ark. It's, it's telling what's going on now. Basically, it, it's, it, it's, a, it's just a replay of what's going on now when everybody's so worried about doing things and going here and going there. You think about uh, how this uh, pandemic, how people are fighting to get back to the, the, the norm and how they, mm -hmm. they want the, the baseball games, the football games. They want to go out and <laughs> party. They want to do the things that that they used to do. And it just brings to me to mind what Jesus was saying was also clarifying what happened to uh, to Lot. You know, it, it it's amazing to see how God takes his, his word and he matches it up to show another side of it. And, and that's the thing that I got out of it, that people are so busy running around trying to find something to please self that they forget about God. So much, and we we just don't know what to do. We don't know what to do to uh, to turn away from it because we're so busy. Okay, one more, one. Can I say one thing to Esther? I don't know if this, but I, I mean, this real this is really boggling my mind, and I just can't let it go. I don't understand. I I, I why people just like the angels came. They told Lot. Like, God wants you to, you know, leave, blah, blah, blah. So they had a warning. Now, this pandemic, we know we're supposed to wear our masks. We know that, no, it's not going to, uh, you know, kill the disease, but it will protect others and protect you, right? But now, so that's a warning. It's not a warning from God, but it's a warning from people who are set in place to make rules and things, you know, like God said, we're, we're supposed to, uh, uh, obey uh, the uh, you know those who have authority over us, but these people don't even want to wear masks. Talking about their freedom and and, mm -hmm. and you know it's just like it boggles my mind. I just don't understand that 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 you, all you gotta do is put a mask on, and if, even if you don't want to protect yourself, protect others from you. It's it's really crazy. It it, it really uh, I'm I'm just I, I I just don't understand it. I don't. And Rufus told me it's just another sign of the time. Good will be looked at as evil, and, and evil, evil will be looked at as good. good. Yeah. So. What, do, what do you think, Mary, to what uh, uh, Lola is saying? How do you connect uh, with uh, spiritual life? I believe she got a good point. If we can be disobedient at, uh, at something so simple like that, what about our spiritual lives? Yeah. We have been receiving um, warnings, you know, left and right. You know, people are becoming, we have um, pastors, prophets, and everything. But yet, the world still lives in turmoil. We're still doing our own things. Oh, it's a self thing. We don't see God as we are supposed to, we're supposed to see him. We see God as God is convenient for us. Mm -hmm. So it's not as God supposed to be portrayed to us as we take God as God is, but we see him as he 
as he convenient for us. So I believe that we should be taking the warning, us living in the last time, we should be taking the warning that is coming to us. The word is not lying. Right. Thank you very much. The word is not lying and we should take the warning very seriously. Yeah. It, you know, we should not live a lie because the is example, this is a lesson, an object lesson for us today to, mm -hmm. to live a holy life. Because if you learn, if you can learn something that happened to somebody, then you feel it, you reflect it to, your, to yourself, then you will have to adjust yourself accordingly. Warning yeah. has been given to us. We are living in the end time and we are living in a very difficult time. We are, we are seeing the signs of the time mm -hmm. happening just before our very eyes. And we mm -hmm. see all of these things are happening. So we should not ignore the message. We should yeah. not. We need to listen to the message and turn, try to adjust ourselves. If you cannot, please call unto God. Amen. God, what should, do you want me to do? Amen. Help me to walk in your way. Show me the way to walk and Amen. help me and help my family. Amen. This should be our prayers. Rufus, can you, would you please close with a word of prayer? Lord Jesus, we thank you, Father God, for this time, yes, Lord. this gathering, Lord Jesus, on the Bible, your word. We ask you, Lord Jesus, to amplify it to the ones that are hearing it and the ones that are seeing it. We thank you, Father God, that you move mightily in our hearts and minds in remembrance of your compassion and your love and your fast love for everyone to be saved, for everyone to be brought into you, Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. but these words are words of, of power, and, and redemption and, and, re and perfect peace in each and every one of us, oh God. Continue to move in our hearts and minds and bless others, Father God, with your precious word. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I wake up in the morning, I get on my knees. I did learn from the master, he taught me to pray. I read on from the scriptures, the patience of Job. Keep on your faith and live with hope. Jesus is the Redeemer and friend, the only comforter when you feel you are alone. He will be there when you cry out. Keep on your faith and live with hope. When you get into trouble, lift up your head and look up to the mountains where your help comes from. You surely have a refuge all night, all day. Keep on your faith and live with hope. Jesus is the Redeemer and friend, the only comforter when you feel you are alone. He will be there when you cry out. Keep on your faith and live with hope. Why don't you trust in him? He's faithful and true. He promised to take us home on his soon return. Oh, don't and never look back. Believe in his word. Keep on your faith and live with hope. Jesus is the Redeemer and friend, the only comforter when you feel you are alone. He will be there when you cry out. Keep on your faith and live with hope. Jesus is the Redeemer and friend, the only comforter when you feel you are alone. He will be there when you cry out. Keep on your faith and live with hope. He will be there when you cry out. Keep on your faith and live with hope. He will be there when you cry out. Keep on 
your faith in me with hope. He will be there when you cry out. Just keep on your faith in me with hope. He will be there when you cry out. Keep on your faith in me. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please do share this video with your loved ones, people in your circle, and if there is any prayer request, please put it under the description. And please remember to subscribe to the channel so that you get every week the video that you deserve. Thank you very much. May God bless you. Amen.